So Toronto's where I'm from, this is my home team, and I think, you know, leaving anywhere was a really difficult choice. But probably the Warriors were the one place where it's like, I think I can make this one work, and seeing that organization at an elite level was special. And I think there's probably very few places I would have left the Warriors for, but Toronto obviously is one. And Toronto, because it's home, uh, because Masai is here, because there's a passion for basketball, and because this is my city. And this, I want to win again here. I think that matters in my heart. You guys rolling? Yeah, good. First of all, thank you for doing this. What do you remember from your time in Swaziland? I think that time for me was uh, was unique in my life. I was born there, I lived there as a baby. But my time when I returned for kind of grade seven and grade eight, uh, which is called form one and form two there, was really formative for me. Uh, and I think at that point in my life, I was understanding that the world was this bigger place. And I kind of had this Canadian identity, but then the Swazi identity. And it was the first time I could really sort of live it and like spend time like with my dad and with, the, with that side of my family and learn that like the, the perspectives that I think now have carried me through, that in these perspectives that the world is this big, broad place, but there's actually way more that's similar than, than different. And so for me, living there and being from there and that being home, you appreciate it more. You realize what's happened year after year, decade after decade, to get a place where it is, and also the strength of the people to persevere through some craziness in terms of what's happened to them politically, socioeconomically, all those sorts of things, and now to be a really vibrant and incredible part of, of the continent, uh, both Swaziland and Rwanda, um, and a place that I love to go back and visit. What a story. They're going to teach local kids how to play basketball and older players how to coach part of a program they run here called Concrete Hoops. You decided to take your time to be philanthropic and start Concrete Hoops. Why? Yeah, I think that um, I love basketball, I love people, and I love Africa. And I think for me, how do I combine and merge all these things? And so me and some high school buddies decided, well, let's run some basketball camps. But it was about, like, how do we run a program that allows athletes, kids, to use this sport to become better. To me and my high school friends, it was like, we've all benefited from basketball. We've seen that it's gonna carry us through in our lives, and how do we create a situation where other people can have that same advantage, and can do simple programming, but learn that basketball really is this tool that can help you navigate life, and help you feel good about yourself, and help you show what skills you have, and that's why Concrete is so much fun for us. So many worthy causes, AIDS prevention. Mm -hmm. Why did that speak to you? So Swaziland at the time, it really was, I think, the number one sort of prevalence of HIV AIDS. Um, and that was a really difficult time. Uh, at that point, the country really couldn't survive. The education system was faltering because there weren't enough teachers. Uh, the healthcare system was faltering because there wasn't enough space, one, to care for people, and two, enough training for the doctors to manage all the people that were affected with HIV AIDS in that time. And to me, it was an education piece of how do we use this sport to sort of cut through a lot of the sort of stigma and a lot of the sort of negativity that surrounded that. We need to help people more. So Concrete Hoops in those early days was about using sport in that capacity, especially within Swaziland, to give some hope and to give some sort of like light uh, in what was potentially a dark place at that point. Give me one clap, buddy, one clap. Giants of Africa, what's your relationship been like with the foundation over the years? Giants of Africa is, of course, an incredible, incredible organization that I've been blessed to be with for, I think, I don't know, nine or six, nine years, 10 years or so now. And what it's about, and, and I think what it, why it matters, is because it fulfills the same things that Concrete Groups did for me. It's about giving back, it's about people, and it's about caring, and using the sport that I'm passionate about and other people are passionate about to make change. And when you do a GOA camp, like, you get filled. Like, people often say, like, you go and, like, you help. No, nah, it's like completely opposite. Like when I go, like I'm going to get help and I'm going to get energy and to get some love and some life and some like some fuel for my day. And I think that when you when you're on the court and there's 200 kids in front of you and you're sort of like they're seeing the excitement, I'm seeing the excitement, and you can get some clapping games going and and get the energy flowing. Like that's such a special space. I'm going to tell you guys this: we believe in Africa. It doesn't matter if we work in the Western world every day. We sleep, we dream, we think, we eat, we preach Africa. You're also doing it in part because of your relationship with Masai. Do you remember the first time you met him? I was obviously with the Toronto Raptors, and I think Masai might have been the vice president or, not, or assistant GM, assistant GM at that point. I think there was this connection that, well, here's this guy from Africa, and here's this guy from Africa, and like, so we gotta connect. And so this obvious connection that let's, let's work together. Um, and one of the earliest things, he was running basketball at Borders at that point, really sort of prominent in the NBA programming. And he said, why don't you come and help out with one of those programs? And that was like this light bulb moment for me to take Concrete Hoops, to then move it to this big, broad like program with basketball at Borders. It's been incredible to see his growth, uh, not only um, as 
in his career, uh, but as a family man, um, our interaction and trips to Africa, the connection, you know, like going to these camps and every single coach is saying, you know, the camp hasn't started till JAMA comes, you know, like, and his passion, incredible human being. I think this guy is the limit and I'm super, super proud of him. I just want to, uh, to uh, thank uh, everyone here at MLSE and with the Raptors specifically. That's an amazing opportunity for myself and for my family. We are really looking forward to this, uh, to be Mississauga, to coach the 905 team. What's that experience been like for you to work from players uh, from the ground up to the point where they're established names in the league? I love working with young people young players and seeing their journey. And to me, it's never singular. It's never like one workout defines what that's about. It's like over the course of six months, over the course of 20 games, over the course of two years, or 10 years down the road, where do they grow? And like seeing that joy for me is really important. You always want those guys to play well and to do well because you've connected with them as a, as a person first and you've known who their families, what motivates them, what are, they, what are they, their challenges in life. And working that through and being able to support people on their journey, the way I was supported in my journey, that's what matters. You know, I remember being in the G League in 905 and like, you know, um, I got a two-way and I wasn't sure where, you know, what my career was going to be, if I was going to be in G League and all that. And he gave me so much confidence, like he believed in me, with my head coach in that time. And I won MVP and Defensive Player of the Year and all year he was like, you know, consistently making me realize that, you know, I got to keep going. Even when I was like feeling like I was, you know, I was doing everything and I was, he couldn't be better. It's definitely, you know, a big, big, big um, thing for me to have him back. And, like I said, um, I don't think they could have done a better decision than not for me when it comes to me. Lastly, if someone watching this could learn one thing mm -hmm. from your journey, your story, what would you want it to be? Hmm. Wow, that's a really good question. I think that each day, you just need to approach the day with the right attitude. And you're not really sure where that's gonna go. And sometimes, like, there's people have bad days, and I think that's okay. But I think if you approach with the right attitude, you can work your way through that bad day and make it a slightly better day. And then the next day, maybe get slightly better than that. I think if you look at my career, it's been about these long, slow steps towards a direction that's been successful. And it's and it's it's simple choices along the way. And those choices usually are about being kind to people. It's about sharing. It's about the things that we all talk about all the time. And I think I just encourage people to keep doing that, be authentically themselves, um, enjoy each and every day. And like I tell my players all the time, to really enjoy like sunny days. You create your own sunny days each and every way. So have your good sunny day. Well, uh, both in Canada and on the continent, there are so many people who are happy for your success. So thank you for making it a sunny day for all of us.